welcome to the House of Hypertrophy. A brand new study comparing training and muscle once a week to three times per week for hypertrophy and strength has come out. In my view, it's the single best designed study on training frequency to date, primarily as it provides individual data allowing us to know if the best training frequency differs between individuals. Furthermore, this new study has actually shifted my opinion on training frequency since my last video on the topic. Let's dive straight into the new paper. 24 trained men with an average 203kg unilateral leg press 1 rep max were recruited. Subjects were split into two groups. In one of the groups, the researchers equated total training tonnage between training once and three times per week. This actually resulted in the once per week frequency performing the max number of reps they could per set, while the three times per week frequency, in order to accumulate similar tonnage to the once per week frequency, had to hold back and perform many of the sets further from failure. In my view, as proximity to failure is crucial for muscle growth, and there's not a strong relationship between training tonnage and muscle growth, this group isn't useful or applicable to the real world. The second group is the more interesting group that more accurately translates to the real world, so I'll only detail this. But if you're still interested in the first group, I've detailed all you need to know about this group in the pinned comment. Anyway, with the second group, subjects had one leg assigned to train once a week and the other leg assigned to train three times per week. With the leg assigned to train once a week, subjects performed nine sets of the max reps they could on the unilateral leg press all in one session per week. With the three times per week leg, subjects performed three sets of the max reps they could on the unilateral leg press across three sessions per week. So total sets per week were the same between both legs. Note, both legs target rep numbers per set depended on the week and subjects adjusted the load each set when necessary to make sure they hit that week's rep number target. It was ultimately found both strength, measured by unilateral leg press 1 rep max, and muscle growth, measured by quadriceps cross-sectional area at around the 50% region, were not statistically different between the 1 and 3 times per week leg. Now, statistical significance or non-significance is often considered to be a definitive finding, but as detailed in this great article, this is very misleading. It is entirely plausible to have a non-statistically significant finding, but for there to be potentially a real difference. Due to this, looking at other statistical data is also helpful. Fortunately, the researchers provided us with this. When looking at these additional statistics, there appears to be a potentially real difference between the frequencies, the effect sizes, which measures how big differences are, and the accompanied confidence intervals point towards the three times per week leg experiencing greater strength and muscle growth. The graph with individual data plotted also demonstrates that a number of individuals experienced notably more strength and muscle growth with a three times per week leg. Yet, it's essential to point out there still were a number of individuals who saw minimal differences in gains between the two training frequencies, or even slightly more gains with a once a week frequency. Actually, one individual saw markedly more strength gains with a once per week leg versus the three times per week leg. This study is perfect experimental evidence of individual differences with training frequency. Some trained individuals gain notably more with a three times per week frequency, while others don't. In this week's completely unrelated info, check out these Indian bodybuilders from the 1920s I ran across from a post by Menno. Given it was the 1920s, you can be pretty sure they were natty. Super inspiring. Alright, on to the next part. Some may be thinking surely the results just outlined state the obvious. Of course individual differences exist. Yet, someone could come along and say humans are humans. We all have muscles constructed with the same elements. The composition of muscle tissue is going to be very comparable between humans. So what works for one human should robustly extend to what works for another human. But experimental data allows us to rebuttal these assumptions. The data further allows us to inspect how consistent and how large these individual differences are. Perhaps even more excitingly, scientific research might eventually uncover why these individual differences exist. What mechanisms cause this individual to experience markedly more strength gains when training once versus three times per week? What mechanisms cause some individuals to grow more training three times per week while others to not? Hopefully sports science research gets to this point. A great strength of the study was each subject trained both once and three times per week. One leg trained once a week, while the other leg trained three times per week. 
This is a powerful study design as it rules out genetics, nutrition, and outside lifestyle factors as confounders. Yet, sports science savvy individuals may be wondering if the cross education effect is a concern. For the unaware, the cross education effect is the phenomenon where training only one limb can produce gains in the opposite limb despite that opposite limb not being directly trained. As subjects train to each leg with a different training frequency, does the cross education effect mess up the data? With the muscle growth results, it very likely does not. The muscle growth transfer from one limb to the opposite seems to be tiny. For example, this 2005 USA study had 243 men and 342 women train only one of their biceps with unilateral preacher and concentration curls. The trained bicep increased in cross-sectional area by an average of 18.9%. However, the untrained bicep only increased in cross-sectional area by an average of 1.4%. With strength, the transfer from one limb to the opposite is more significant. The same 2005 USA study found the trained bicep increased unilateral preacher curl 1 rep max strength by 54.1%, while the untrained bicep saw a 10.6% increase in unilateral preacher curl 1 rep max strength. Yet, it's very possible the cross-education effect is minimized in trained individuals training both their limbs with different training variables, as done in the study outlined. The fact that we observed an average difference in strength gains between the once and three times per week leg hints at this. If the cross-education effect was an issue, we'd expect a bi-directional transfer of strength gains between limbs, leading to similar strength gains between legs, but this didn't occur. Average strength gains favored the leg training three times per week versus once a week. So the study we overviewed was highly insightful, but what does the rest of the hypertrophy training frequency research say? There was a 2019 meta-analysis on training frequency and hypertrophy that was detailed in my old video on the topic. Meta-analyses statistically combine the results of numerous individual studies on a given topic, and meta-analyses are often considered the highest form of scientific evidence in all variations of science evidence hierarchies. The meta-analysis found no difference in muscle growth between higher and lower frequencies. Now, remember the study we overviewed, in addition to presenting individual data, still suggests more average muscle with a 3 times per week frequency versus 1 frequency. Given the evidence hierarchy, shouldn't we consider that meta-analysis finding above the average findings from that single paper? In my perhaps controversial view, not necessarily. The methods of the meta-analysis and included studies matter. A limitation of the mentioned meta-analysis is they considered the high and low frequencies specific to the study. For example, in one study, training three times per week was classed as a low frequency, while in another study, training three times per week was classed as a high frequency. Moreover, many of the included studies in the meta-analysis are divergent from the one we analyzed. Either differing training frequencies were compared, like once versus twice a week, or six versus three times per week. It involved training with fewer than nine weekly sets, involved untrained individuals, or measured muscle growth with less precise methods like DEXA or skin folds. Another extremely important point is all of these studies compare two different groups of people. Unlike the study outlined in this video, each subject did not train with both training frequencies. So genetics, nutrition, and outside lifestyle factors can all confound the studies included in that meta-analysis. Finally, linked to this point and of vital importance, the meta-analysis does not provide us with an insight into individual differences. The new study does. A 2018 meta-analysis found strength gains were similar between lower and higher frequency training. However, as was the case with the hypertrophy meta-analysis, many of the included studies are divergent from the one we analyzed. Either differing training frequencies were compared, like once versus twice a week, or two versus three times per week, involved training with fewer than nine weekly sets, or involved untrained individuals. All of them also compared two different groups of people meaning genetics, nutrition, and outside lifestyle factors are potential confounders. Finally, again, this meta-analysis does not provide us with an insight into individual differences. The new study does. Of course, the study outlined in the video only compared a 1-3 to three times per week training frequency. It would be great to see similarly designed studies comparing other frequencies, like 2 versus 3 times per week, or even 3 versus 5 times per week. At the end of the day, 
My concluding recommendations are that if you're training with a low frequency and seeing great gains, I don't believe you should change anything based on this new data. Remember, there are certainly individuals who see no difference between lower and high frequencies, or even better gains with lower frequencies. However, you could still experiment with higher frequencies in the future if you wish. If you're training with a lower frequency and you're not content with the gains, you may wish to experiment with higher frequencies to see if this can notably change things. The data demonstrates there are individuals who see greater gains with higher frequencies. If you've made it here, I have a free ebook you might like, The Ultimate Guide to Bench Pressing for Strength and Hypertrophy with more than 100 scientific references. From technique to training variables to comparisons and other fascinating science, we cover it all. Grab it through the link in the description or comments.